Hi, I'm Holly. I'm Sharice. And we are going to answer your question about what to expect on a first gynecological visit. When you should first go is if you're either sexually active or if you suspect that you have some sort of problem. So maybe you've had several months where all of a sudden you just didn't have your period. Or you're having some kind of pain that's unusual. Or, or you're, you notice a big change in your period. A big change, like maybe bleeding a lot. Right. Or something, right. something like that. And if neither one of those things happen by the time you're 21 years of age, then you should just go because you're 21, apparently. That's the age when they want to start sort of getting a baseline of what's normal for you and, and uh, developing a relationship with a gynecologist. Perfect. Not that kind of relationship, you know? I mean, he's going to be your doctor. You're not going to date him. Hopefully. Welcome back. I'm Cherise. I'm Holly. And we had a few problems with the camera, and so now we are filming on a different day. Different location. But let's continue. So, uh, there's going to be a pelvic exam uh, during this visit to your gynecologist, and Basically, what he does is take a he takes a company a gloved hand and make sure it's gloved. Make sure. <laughs> yes, and then he'll put some sort of lubricant on it so that it's easy for him to do the exam, and, he, and then put two fingers into your vagina and palpate your stomach. So a couple fingers inside of you hand on the outside and he feels around from the inside and the outside to make sure everything feels normal. Right. Which it probably will. And uh, it's not painful. It's not it's, a painful exam. It's not painful. At least it wasn't for me. I mean, you know, it feels... It's uncomfortable. A little uncomfortable. And, you know, your first couple times it'll probably feel slightly embarrassing, maybe. But you just have to keep reminding yourself, he does this like a hundred times a day. And mm -hmm. so to him, it is completely normal. Totally comfortable. Mm -hmm. Not a weird thing for him to do. This is his job. He does this all day. Weird. Um, let's see. And then he'll do a pap smear. And so basically what they want to do with the pap smear is they take a very long Q-tip that will reach all the way to your cervix. And so you, you have a speculum inside of you, which is kind of like salad tongs that are the kind that are stuck together. And so they put them in closed and then they open it up and then that helps to hold you open so that he can reach his little q-tip in and swab 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 all around to make sure and then he takes that and puts it on a little slide right and why would they do that Sharice? they do that to test the cells it goes to a lab gets tested and then it comes back normal abnormal and then they know where to go from there right mm -hmm. and so it's not a test that you can study for so don't feel bad. It's not an A, B, C, D. It's not. It's nothing like that. You're not going to get it right or wrong, really. Right. You don't really have a lot of control over what your cells are like down there. No. Mm -mm. No control, in fact. Mm. Zero. So then you'll probably, I mean, I don't know, at my doctor's office, usually a week or two later, we get a little card in the mail that says everything mm -hmm. looks A-OK, -okay. see you in a year. Right. Right. And so once a year, you'll come, go in for that exam. And even if it was abnormal, a lot sometimes there can be false positives on those tests. So don't mm -hmm. worry yourself if you, if it comes back and it's abnormal. Don't don't, you know, wait till it, all this all the testing is done before you worry because worry is no fun. That's a good point. And they'll probably it creates lines. Mm, that'll age you. That'll age you, and that'll cost a lot of money in the future. Mm -hmm. Botox. Botox. You could tox it out, but that doesn't. And then you're Stay. like frozen, you know, no. I'm sad, I'm really sad, I'm happy, I'm laughing hysterically. You mm -hmm. always look like that. Mm -hmm. I don't really know what that has to do with this, but I'm glad we put it in there. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's what happens. And uh, so there's usually a breast exam um, where they see if there are any lumps in your breast. There's a pelvic exam. And then there's the pap smear where they check for any abnormal cells. And... I don't know, are there any ways that you can make yourself feel better about all of that? Do you have any ideas? Just knowing that everybody ha should have it done, you know? 
The other thing yes. is, is if you if you if you are a, usually they'll do like a case history when you go in there, ask you if you have any problems with your cycle when you started your cycle. Mm -hmm. I mean, what age you were and things of that nature, um, and and let them know everything, like how mm -hmm. much you've started, if your cycle has changed. Oh, it used to be really light, now it's really heavy, or vice versa, whatever it is. Let them know any changes like that because that can kind of help them, mm -hmm. you know, maybe approach it differently or look for different things that they need to look for. Um, the other thing is, is if you, if you um, have heavy cycles, you might want to see if they might want to do some blood work just to make sure you're not anemic and losing too much um, blood during your cycle. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. One doctor did not do that for me and I wish he would have done it or recommended it. Right. And I, I think you might, if you have a heavy cycle, you might really want to let a doctor know what well, what does heavy mean? Because a lot of doctors right. might think a teenage girl won't know. So um, you might want to say, you know, I go through a tampon an hour. I don't know, whatever it is for you, right. just so that they know, wow, this really is heavy, and we need to really look into it. Mm -hmm. And and also, if you think you're going to get in there, feel horribly embarrassed, not want to say anything, just write it all down before you go in. That's you a can great idea. always hand it to the nurse. She can put it in your file when the doctor opens your file to read through whatever the nurse's notes are. He'll see something written from you saying. I'm worried about heavy periods or I'm worried about, you know, whatever it is. They'll have it on file. Good point. Which would be great. Mm -hmm. And then you can really talk about it or he could talk to your mom about it or whatever mm -hmm. you decide. Mm -hmm. um, but most of all, just don't be afraid to do it. I mean, once you've been through it once, you'll know exactly what it takes and um, you'll realize it's not really that big a deal. It's really, how long do you think, how long do your exams normally take? Well, you mean by the time you're sitting in there in your paper gown for an hour? Right. Yeah, no, the actual time he's with you. I would say actual time, like face-to-face, -face, no more than 15. Yeah, I would say the same yeah. thing. 15 minutes, usually it's done. I hope this information helps you. I'm Holly. I'm Sharice. And good luck on your first gynecological visit. Enjoy your visit. Treat yourself to a frappuccino after. Yeah.